if you have used um, REST APIs and made AJAX calls to those REST APIs from JavaScript, then it is very likely that you are aware of course issues or same origin policy, SOP issues. Um, if not, then no problem. I will explain what course and same origin policies are. But more importantly, for those who know what course and same origin policies are, you have, uh, if you have faced that, and if you have a, an API or a REST API that is not ready for course and does not uh, expose course headers, then uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to get around that problem and still use it. And then hopefully um, either you continue to use this approach uh, in production as well, or maybe in production you have a different way of deploying or a different place where the API is deployed so that the issue goes away on its own. If it doesn't, this uh, method will still work. So let's talk about what the issue is, okay? Before that, let's talk about what course is, C-O-R-S. Now, C-O-R-S is a solution to a problem, and the problem is SOP, same origin policy. And what is that? Uh, it basically means that if you have JavaScript being served from server A, then it can make a callback only to server A and not to other servers. But that a rule can be broken if the other server is prepared to be called and the other per server is uh, exposes special headers that are uh, course headers, cross origin resource sharing headers. And the name of the header uh, specifically is access-control-allow-origin. As long as the origin server of JavaScript is listed in access control allow origin, uh, the REST API server will will um, it will expose that in the access control and allow origin, and the browser will allow uh, JavaScript to call such a server. Okay, all this is very theoretical. Let's actually see an example. All right, so I have here, let's see, let me take you to this random joke API. So I'm going to copy paste. So this is the uh, the URL. Uh, obviously, I'll I'll make this URL available in the show notes. But let me zoom in on the URL a bit. Uh, yeah. So it's joke API strict course HTTPS joke API strict course appspot.com random joke. Okay. So this is the URL. And when you um, when you um, hit it directly in your browser, it obviously response and it has a setup it returns a joke with a setup and a um i guess um, uh, a setup and a, and a punchline yeah that's what it does so here you have setup if you boil a clown then the punchline is do you get a laughing stock question mark so okay well uh, the quality of the jokes as well as how funny they are is up to you to decide but in any case my point is to demonstrate uh, the course issue and the solution to it. Okay, so now what is, uh, this is working just fine. What's the issue? There is no issue. Well, if you look at the, uh, the headers, uh, you will notice that the response uh, does not have access control allow origin header. Okay, now access control allow origin header is what allows uh, cross-origin resource sharing. And this will become evident when we try to call this service. Let's do that. Okay, so what we will do is, oh, sorry, I have something open. Let me close it. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay. I'm going to CD dev web rm minus rf course demo. I was just working on that, so I got rid of it. Okay, now I'm gonna create the directory course demo. And in there I will go, I will CD to it. And then I will do a uh, basic, so make directory basic. And basic is a basic demo of the issue, okay? All right, let's open this as a project, as a folder. 
So course demo basic, there it is. It's an empty folder. So I am going to write some JavaScript so that I can hit this. Okay. So let's create a new file. We will call it index.html and there is the basic um, skeleton of an HTML page and I will call this course demo and here's the heading one course demo and we will have let's say we're going to make a call uh, to the server so let's do that let's create a button ajax call i guess right and we will say uh, fetch joke okay so this will have an id let's give it an id of button b1 right and we will um yeah let's just uh, we can have a setup and, a, and, a, and the other thing right here. So uh, dev id setup. And this is the setup. And then we have dev id punchline. Sorry, punchline. That's the punchline. And we could put dot, dot, dot between those. So now we have a basic uh, HTML page. Let's open this in a live server. So this is the live server. And there you see, uh, in case you're not familiar with live server, live server is the plugin for VS Code that will uh, run a small web server and serve your page using that live server. Okay, so that's all we did. I just right clicked on it and say open in live server. And that's what it opened. It's running on 127.0.0.1 and 5500. Let me make sure that the fonts, etc., are visible. Um, okay, hopefully that's visible enough. Okay. Um, all right, so now we will write some JavaScript that will fetch the joke. So let's write some script javascript and we will say when this button is fetched clicked uh, the joke should be fetched and plugged into the setup and punchline okay so we just say um, document dot get element by id and we will get mm, the button one so we can say const b1 now i'm using some uh, more modern javascript syntax i hope that's okay um, this is just to demonstrate the issues uh, of course okay all right so now uh, that's your button let's uh, also get the other elements so there you have uh, setup and that's setup and this is punch line and that's punch line okay now Let's see, b1 dot, now we will attach the click handler. So add event listener, and the name of the event is click. And here's your handler, and the handler is gonna be a function. It could be a lambda function or just a function, either will work. And we say, okay, when this button is clicked, let's run a fetch request. And so this is the, Fetch request and the URL, as you know, is this. So let's copy this URL and paste it here. That's your, I mean, you could always do this const URL equal to all of them will work. You, so we fetch the URL, and when that succeeds, so you have a then, and when such a thing succeeds then you want to um, take the response and from that response you can return the response.json you are passing the response json and when that succeeds i hope this will work then you want to just assign that um, those values to something so if we have a json response 
then we want to say, and here's the, the body, we want to assign this to um, to these uh, to, to divs, right? They're in their HTML. So we will simply say, well, set up, this is the div dot inner HTML is equal to, or inner text rather, inner text, let's do that, is equal to JSON dot setup. And then similarly, punch lines inner text is equal to JSON dot punch line. So this is, let's see if this works. It won't, but let's try it anyways. So I save this and hopefully this would work. So I go to inspect. I wanna show you what happens in console. I fetch joke and there you go. Um, most of it worked, you know, um, listening to the event, the event length listener was, uh, was triggered, but then we get this error, access to fetch at, and once again, let me make this font bigger access to fetch at fetch api strict course app spot.com random joke um, from origin 127001 5500 has been blocked by course policy no access control allow origin header is present so this is the issue this is what is stopping course um, the browser rather this is what this is why the browser refuses to access such a um, such a RESTful service, uh, an HTTP service. So you can check that in network. If you go to network and look at this, uh, you will see that there is really no such a um, header. So the header is missing. So what we are looking for is an access control, not request header, sorry, response header. There should be an access control allow origin in here, which is not there. Okay, so now hopefully you understand the problem. Let's bring up the solution. And the solution is, and let me show you what the solution is, is something called Course Anywhere. So Course Anywhere is an NPM module. So let's go to NPM JS, yes, this one. So this is called Course Anywhere. And the way you use it is you run your own, you can run your own little proxy server um, locally, and uh, this proxy server will so instead of hitting the the joke server directly, we hit our proxy server, which in turn will hit the um, actual joke server. And since the request is being made from our browser. Uh, to our local, uh, sorry, our, our JavaScript is being served from localhost and this proxy server is also running on localhost. Uh, such a, a request is allowed. And then um, the proxy server makes a call to uh, the service that is running over here, right? And that service anyway doesn't have a problem. It is not ready for course, but then uh, the course is a browser policy. It's not a policy uh, enforced uh, by Node.js, specifically this course anywhere server, okay? So this is how we get around the problem. So let's uh, implement it. All we have to do is copy paste. Um, so let's get a course anywhere as, a, as an NPM module. So in order to get any particular NPM module, first we have to create a package.json. So we can do that by saying npm in, uh, init minus y as in take say yes to all questions. So take all the defaults. So we just did that. And now we can install npm install. Uh, you could say minus minus save, I guess. Don't know if it's necessary. And we say course anywhere. So we are downloading this. Um, this NPM module called Course Anywhere. Now that we have that, we can create a new file and let's call it proxy.js. So now, and we we copy this, this code and paste it into proxy.js. So what is it doing? It simply loads the NPM module and using it creates a server. It has origin whitelist. It requires that the uh, the client send origin and X requested with 
and then it removes the cookie header and cookie to header. And this is helpful because it makes your uh, system more secure. You are not sending your private cookies over to the wrong server by mistake. Okay. So this is why these headers are to be removed. And then finally, just prints the running course anywhere on such and such host. Okay, so let's save this. Once we save this, remember we were getting this error. Um, let's, uh, let's make sure we are still getting this error. Fetch joke. Well, the error is still there. Good. Now, let's run this proxy.js using Node.js. So I will say Node. Um, proxy.js okay so this is running and now it's running course anywhere on um, my public IP so I don't want to do that let me control C kill that and I want I'll change this from 0, .0. whatever to 127 .0. so this way it is not accepting connections from anywhere and everywhere it's just accepting from my local host if you are running this on a different host on your network then you might have to open it up a little okay so let's save this and um, let's run this again and now it's running on this port good now we have to change our code in index.html instead of making that request to this url directory we will create, we make it through the proxy. So let's say proxy is equal to uh, HTTP 127, sorry, slash, slash 127.0.0.1, 8080, and slash. The slash is important because we are going to combine these two, the proxy and the URL. We are combining them together. So now what is going to happen is when we make a request to this URL, we are not going to make it directly to this URL from our JavaScript browser JavaScript. We're going to prefix with it with the proxy. And now the request, uh, the total request uh, link is this plus this, okay? And uh, the proxy server is programmed so that it, it sees the uh, URL path as the URI path has the URL it is supposed to proxy to and just uh, makes the request for you, relays the response back to you. Okay, let's see whether this works. So I saved it, I reload, of course, and now I fetch joke. Oh, oh, oh look at this, no errors, and we actually see uh, the joke. Here's the setup, what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, we can play with this as much as uh, you want. Here is hip hip, and then hip hip array. So this is a programming joke, I guess. Uh, and if you look at the network, you will see that we made two requests. The first one was made to 127, blah, blah, blah. And then this time it does have access control all our origin. And in any case, it doesn't need it so much because they are, it's from, JavaScript is from localhost and the server you are calling is also localhost. But any case, it doesn't hurt. And then this proxy server made a request to jokes API on our behalf, which is over here. And it worked just fine. Great. So this is the quick uh, workaround on what to do when a service doesn't allow you to call it directly from your JavaScript. But this is only part of the solution. This is very clunky. It, I am running, this is not how you are going to do anything in real world. In real world, you, you won't be serving your index.html with live server. And in real world, you don't want to run your proxy server like this um, from command line like this. So let's kill this. Uh, we could improve on this by going to package.json and we add a script and we will call it proxy script. And now the proxy script will simply run node and then proxy.js. It's a very small improvement, but maybe it, it helps. And now in npm scripts, we can just click proxy. And now it's running in its own little um, terminal or you know its own shell, I guess. And we have our own shell um, quite ready and available. So this helps a little bit. It doesn't change much, but yeah, 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 things are working as they should be. What do you give to a lemon in need? Lemonade.
Haha. <laughs> okay. Um, very appropriate lemon of a joke. Let's, uh, but this is again still not absolutely the way we do things. So let's now replace this um, very basic project with something that we would probably use in real life. Um, since you, as you know, I love Svelte, hence the big Svelte logo, and I love Rollup, hence the mention of a Rollup proxy server. So we will convert this to a Svelte application. Uh, we won't convert it, we'll just start it from scratch. So let's uh, kill this and let's um, cd dot dot and we will uh, we will uh, copy the Svelte application uh, starter kit, starter uh, project by, as we always do, we say npx dig it Svelte js slash rollup. Now, if you are not familiar with Svelte, and roll up, don't worry, these things are still applicable to what you are going to do. You could be using Webpack or you could be using other, other uh, task runners like Gulp. Um, this knowledge will still be applicable. So let's do that and we will call this um, Svelte Roll Up uh, Course. Let's call it this Svelte Roll Up Course. Cross origin resource sharing again. Okay. So this, what happened here? Oh, sorry, I, I made a mistake. It should, the this path is not Svelte.js rollup, it's Svelte.js slash template, my bad. Okay, now let's open that project instead of this one. So there it is, Svelte rollup course. Uh, this is a basic um, Svelte template in order to run it we have to first do npm install. So let's do npm install. Uh, okay. I hope npm install is already done. Maybe it is, let's find out. I don't think, I mean, it might it might not work. Let's see. Yeah, it didn't work. So I have to right click and say run install. So it is doing npm in install for us. And so this project is obviously a starter project. It already has rollup config. It has package JSON. It even has some basic source, etc. So we will see how this goes. All right, so this is finished. Let's keep going. Um, let's uh, okay. So let's now um, run this project with yeah. There it is. Dev. Okay, so before we even do anything, let's just fix the app dot. Um, so in SRC, let's fix main dot JS and uh, we don't need the the default props. So let's get rid of that. And in app dot JS, we don't need any of this stuff. Oh yeah, let's call this course demo. Okay, and we'll say with Svelte and roll up. Of course, I have I cannot use and like that. I'll say amp m percent like that. Okay, and then we can put uh, two divs, so div um, for setup and div for, but since this is swelled and not plain uh, JavaScript and plain HTML, we can do things in a better way. Let's see div 
and this is setup and div this is punchline and put dot 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 no need for ids because we are going to use bind this okay and we will give this yeah. so bind this gives you a direct reference to this dom element setup and similarly bind this and this will be punchline once you do that oops I misspelled punchline Once you do that, you can, oh, let's get rid of this name. Uh, let setup and punch line. So these are variables declared now. Okay, so there's, okay. So now we can, once they're bound, let's create a button, button, and this will be fetch joke button and i am going to now again this is swelled this is not plain html and javascript so we use on click on on colon click and then give it a method and we'll call it a function callback called fetch uh well we cannot call it fetch because that's the name of the method we are about to use so let's just call it fetch joke and let's create it so function fetch joke and we will use the same url which is right here i'm going to copy it so this is const url equal to double quotes this and we say fetch this url and this time instead of using dot then let's use uh, the async await uh, syntax so const response is equal to await as soon as you start using await the system will start complaining pretty soon that uh, you cannot use await uh, this is not an asynchronous function so let's make it an asynchronous function once you make this an asynchronous function await is okay then let's say const json is equal to again this is also asynchronous so yes you would say await response dot json okay and now you have a json it the json is this json and you parsed it so now let's assign it all we have to do oh sorry what am i doing i don't need bind this this is the wrong way to do it the right way is uh, i can simply set these variables so this will be set up and this will be punchline. Oh, sorry, yeah, I didn't mean to make uh, those variables references to DOM elements. It's much easier to simply uh, say setup is equal to JSON dot setup and punchline is also JSON dot punchline. And once you do that, and we can, we can even give it some starting value setup is set up like this because that's what you want to see in the beginning and punch line is punch line okay so once you save this let's see if this works uh, now of course this is the old uh, live server we are no longer hitting this live server we need to hit the so at this point is everything compiling first of all Let's see. Uh, it should be compiling. Let's uh, let's just restart the dev server. Hopefully, if it restart the dev server, good, and it compiles. So let's uh, hit the localhost 500 in here. Copy and paste that in here. So this is my rollup server running. Okay, course demo with Svelte and rollup. Oh, it has a little bit, a bit too much uh, style. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, it's centered also. Um, that's fine. We don't care. So let's now make the request. Ha! Huh. Error. 
same old uh, error as before because we did not use any kind of proxy server. Okay, so this is the key thing we wanted to demonstrate. So response headers, there are there is no access control allow origin. Okay, and that's the reason why in the console it says you know can't access. You don't have ex uh, you don't have course uh, cross origin resource sharing. Okay, all right. So obviously we know how to fix it now using course anywhere. Let's do that. So let's go into a shell and npm install minus minus save or save dev if you want but course anywhere is what we will add now that we have that we want to run that server now this is where rollup comes in instead of running the server uh, in parallel there are many ways to do that we could copy that proxy.js over here and um, you know as you know Here's the here's the code, and uh, this is the code. We could copy this and run it independently, but that's that's not what we want to do. We want to do it in a way that rollup would um, that is friendly to rollup. So here is rollup.config.js. Rollup is already doing something very similar. We just have to leverage that. You see, rollup is ru uh, running a web server, and it says when I'm not in production run this web server we and this that web server is what is uh, serving the app from localhost 5000 we could just uh, use that same approach not the same server but the same approach so i'm going to copy and paste and duplicate that okay and i will keep this started false and then even later started true. And it uh, what 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 is happening is uh, we are running we are we are adding a little um, tiny little custom uh, rollup plugin, and that's how the web server is running. Similarly, we will also do the same thing. Of course, we cannot call this serve. We have to call it something else. We'll call it proxy, and uh, it uses this the bundles. Uh, sorry, the rollup. Um, plugins they have this thing uh, a callback called write bundle and that is called um, when it is ready to uh, it's one of the callbacks okay when it's ready to uh, write the output and we uh, kind of leverage that to do what we want which is in this case not uh, running a, a web server but running a proxy server and that's where we copy and paste this code so let's copy this code and we will paste it exactly here. Let's reformat this a little. And as I said, since our JavaScript is from localhost, let's just change this to localhost. Okay, save it. So now this is going to run course anywhere on localhost 8080. So we go back. Uh, first of all, we, we restart our dev server so that hopefully we will have um, yeah so waiting for changes hopefully our um something is running on a port 8080 maybe let's find out if it is we can find that, that out easily by running uh, netstat minus nta grep 8080 mm. It's not running on poor. Oh, yes, of course, it's not running because we never started it. We never called this proxy function. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. So I'm going to take this. Uh, if, if we are not in production, run the web server. We, I'll just duplicate it and we'll say if we are not in production, run the proxy server. Same exact thing. Okay. So if we now restart the dev server, hopefully it will run correctly this time. There you go. You see localhost 8080, it was saying, and I can prove that by running that netstat and grep 8080. And as you can see, someone is listening on port 8080. That's our proxy server. Okay, now that everything is in place, we just have to change the code. So let's change the code. We will go to our app.svelte and instead of making the request directly to URL, we will add a proxy server. So const 
proxy is equal to http localhost 8080 slash and when we make the request we add the proxy right in front of the url okay oh sorry semicolon yeah save this and now let's see what happens fetch joke <laughs> and there you go you got a joke what's the best time to go to the dentist and the time is 2 30 tooth hurty or 2 30 okay all these these jokes are a mixed bag some of them are good some of them are not so good but hey it's a free api and the point of this is not to laugh but to learn okay and we are learning about course and we are learning how to run our own little proxy server called course anywhere to get around the course issues or lack of course headers great so this is uh, this is very good i mean we could improve this just a little bit there is something we could we could do the problem is if this code ends up in production then now it is always expecting um, yeah it's expecting this to uh, to be there the proxy server to always be there and maybe in production you don't want to do that then what okay so we have a solution the solution is we uh, whenever we are in production we could detect that and we could not only not run the proxy server which of course won't run anyway our rollup.config uh, doesn't run the proxy server if we are uh, in production right but it would also remove this proxy server how do we do that well fortunately there is a plugin a rollup plugin called replace so let's let me just show you rollup plugin replace so this is the replace plugin if you look at this plugin all they're saying oh yeah this is the new place for rollup plugin replace so let's click on that and one of them is the replace plugin where is the replace plugin there it is click on it and it shows you how to use it so this rollup plugin called replace oh by the way i i made a little mistake i forgot to import uh, the this course proxy oh sorry it is imported here sorry never mind um, so yes replace plugin so we will just import it like this and then in the chain of plugins we will add replace into the chain let me just show you how let's uh, first of all let's add a replace to our project so there it is we will copy this uh, okay let's kill this npm install minus minus save dev or save maybe eh. Yeah, it's at de development time. So yes, save dev. Oh, it's needed only at build time, right? So roll up plugin, replace. And uh, we install it. So the idea is that we shouldn't have this proxy server even in the code anywhere. It should never be expected. It should be just compiled out. And that can be done once we have added replace. We can go to roll up and say, hey, um, import this replace plugin in rollup config and then right in the very beginning before you even do svelte call replace plugin and what are we replacing so first of all you have to give it an object and in that object you have keys and values keys are what you're replacing and value is what you are replacing it with and in this we will instead of having localhost 8080 uh, we can say hey replace that with um, I guess nothing or you could yeah there are, there are many ways to do this but we will call this we'll replace it and say we'll call it course proxy 
URL. Let's call it this. Mm -hmm. And now we will say, hey, whenever you see course proxy URL, replace it. Now, if you are in production, then replace it with nothing. If you are not in production, which means dev, then replace it with HTTP slash slash local host ADAD slash. Okay, so this is a very simple replacement. Save this, come back here, and then there is one more thing you need to do. Remember this course proxy URL will be replaced either with localhost 8080 or with a blank string. So we can simply, uh, well, we don't even have to do anything at this point. Um, this will be blank, and in, in which case you are adding blank in front of URL. Works just fine, right? Let's rerun our dev. Um, now, if this is not working at all, then we will get a big error saying you are trying to hit a URL called course underscore proxy underscore URL. So let's find out. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Okay, I reload. And I make a request. And it works. So this is definitely working. And because uh, it's the, when the bundle was generated, this particular token was replaced with localhost 8080. Now, if I just change uh, this to production, and which means we, I just say, hey, we are in production, let's say. So only for our testing, if I say, instead of, I, I just reverse this condition, I'm just going to reverse the condition so that I can test this, right? So here we are. I do have to restart the rollup server, okay? So now we are not replacing, okay? So I rerun the rollup watch. Okay. So the proxy server is still running, but we will not be, since we are not doing replacement, uh, or we are doing a replacement of the wrong kind, we are making it blank. Uh, it will try to hit the server directly and it will fail to do that. It will get the course error. There you go, access control. Uh, it's directly hitting the server, joke API. And that should hopefully show you uh, two very um, useful NPM packages. One is the course proxy, and uh, that is the main focus of this video. And then a second, uh, which one is the roll-up plugin, and uh, now, of course, in order to make this correct, I have to remove this production. Okay, so now once I fix that, um, I don't know. Okay, yeah, I, I do have to restart. Rollup is still using the old, old configuration. Restart. Okay, and I reload. And now let's fetch a joke. And there you go. What are the 10 types of people in this world? Those who understand binary and those who don't. Ha, 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 ha. What are the 10 types? Ha, in binary, this would be two. Ha, nice. So, I hope you uh, guys understand now what uh, what same origin policy is, what course cross origin resource sharing is, why you might have a problem with some REST APIs that are not course compliant, um, how to get around that problem with uh, with course anywhere npm module how to do this in a in a very raw basic manner as well as in a more sophisticated manner with rollup and writing a little uh, rollup uh, plugin that runs your course proxy server i hope you learned something i will see you in the next video